Welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we are reviewing fractions and we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions, um, which is honestly one of the most important skills you can have in all of math. And it will definitely help you in algebra because I know that you may not see it yet. We're going to do a lot of problems here with numbers. But eventually we'll do algebra fractions that have letters all over the place. And the same skills that you'll use to add these fractions with numbers, you'll end up using them again for algebra fractions, for fractions with algebraic terms. So let's just get started here. What if you had a fraction uh, one-third and you wanted to add to it another fraction one-third? Here is the secret to adding and subtracting uh, fractions. See this denominator? It's a three. Here you have another, another denominator of the other fraction. That's a three. In order to add these fractions together, you have to have the same denominator. You just do. You're going to have to remember that. To add them or subtract them, you have to have the same denominator. So in this case, we already have this denominator. Now, if you have a problem with you have different denominators, then you need to make them the same before you can actually add or subtract them. So it's a very simple rule. They have to be the same. Now, this one's already the same. So the way you do it is uh, the top two numbers, here you have a 1, here you have another 1. Okay, basically you add those guys because you're adding these fractions. 1 plus 1 over, and the denominator is going to stay the same. You don't add these denominators, you just carry it along for the ride. Okay, and then 1 plus 1 on the top is 2, and then you have 2 thirds. This is the final answer. And then you ask yourself, hey, can I simplify this fraction? Is this fully simplified? And the answer is yes. So you don't do anything further. Let's just do some more problems. It's going to get simpler and simpler as we continue on and do these problems. So let's go and say, what if we have 2 fifths uh, plus 1 fifth? First thing you do is you say, are these denominators the same? Yes, they are. So I can add these fractions. In order to add them, you just add uh, the 2 plus the 1. That's what you add. So you, I'm going to write it down so you understand. 2 plus 1. The bottom number, you don't add them. You just keep it. It just kind of comes along for the ride uh, there. And so you end up with 3 on the top and 5 on the bottom. That is the final answer because you can't simplify this anymore. There's nothing I can divide top and bottom by to make it any simpler. All right, what if I had 2 tenths uh, plus 4 tenths? And I wanted to add these guys together. First thing is check the denominators. 10 and 10, yes, these are the same, so I can do this. So on the top, it's going to be 2 plus 4. And the denominator, it doesn't get added, it just comes along for the ride. And so now I can just take and add the 2 plus 4, that's going to be 6 on the top, and 10 just comes along for the ride on the bottom. Now I ask myself, can I simplify this fraction any further? And I can in this case. 6 tenths can be simplified further because I can divide the top by 2, and I can divide the bottom by 2. And so what I'm going to have is 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the answer is 3 fifths. That's the final answer. I cannot simplify that any further. All right. Now let's try our hand at subtraction. You'll see that it's not really any different or any harder. Um, but what if I have 4 twelfths and I'm trying to subtract from it 1 twelfth? Same rule applies. Basically, I check my denominators. Both of them are a 12, so that's going to uh, stay in place. Now, it's 4 twelfths minus 1 twelfth, so what I'm going to have on the top is 4 minus 1 on the top, because you subtract the numerators, just like we were adding them before. 12 just comes along for the ride. You don't subtract them or add them or anything. On the top, you have 4 minus 1 is 3, and then you have 12. And you ask yourself, can I simplify this fraction? And yes, I can. I can take the 3 twelfths, and I can divide the top by 3, and I can divide the bottom also by 3. That will go evenly. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the answer is 1 fourth. That's the final answer. I cannot simplify this fraction any further. All right. So then I'm going to try another problem. Let's say we have 5 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths. First question is, you know what it is. Do I have the same denominator? Yes, I do. Then I can subtract the numerators. 5 minus 3, the denominator stays along for the ride. 5 minus 3 is 2, and then we have 16. Can I simplify this fraction any further? Yes, I can. 2 sixteenths, I can divide the top by 2, I can divide the bottom by 2. And so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 16 divided by 2 is 8, so the answer is 1 eighth, and that is the final answer. And then for our last problem, we will have 10 over 21. 10 21s minus 3 21s. Question, 
do you have the same common denominator? Are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. So I can take and subtract the numerators, 10 minus 3. The denominators stay the same. 10 minus 3 on the top is 7. 21 goes on the bottom. Is this fraction fully simplified? No, it's not. I can take and simplify this fraction by dividing the top by 7 and the bottom by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 21 divided by 7 is 3, so the answer would be 1 third. That is the final answer. So adding and subtracting fractions literally is a very simple process. You have to have a common denominator in order to add any of these fractions together. Whenever you have that, you just add the numerators and then simplify. Keep the denominator the same, simplify. Same thing for subtraction, except you're subtracting the numerators, keeping the denominator the same, and then simplifying. So following on to the next lesson, we will add fractions where these denominators are not going to always be the same, and then you will have to make them the same in order to add or subtract them.